Hey, good morning everybody. Jason here this morning. So, um, went down, the, we were down 55, now we're up 4 or something like that. Um, just that uh, initial opening was pretty down, now we're bouncing back pretty okay. Um, so I wanted to get right into talking about margin a little bit today. So, John Fee had asked me about this. And, and actually the first thing I, I wondered is fee your real last name or is fee a uh, username that you chose based on the number in case you, in case you don't know and you're curious, probably a lot of people aren't fee is the golden ratio. Um, there was a, there was a good book I read, um, several years ago, um, called the golden ratio, the story of fee. Um, it was by Mario Livio, I believe. Um, interesting if you're a numbers or math nerd at all, if not, probably no interest to you, but it's pretty cool. It's a number that happens all over the place, like in nature. And it's also very useful in engineering and building things. So, um, margin, let's talk about that a little bit. So downsides and upsides of using margin, um, upsides, obviously you have a lot more leverage. The downside is you have a lot more leverage. So used responsibly, used correctly, I think it could be a good thing, but you have to know yourself, are you going to take all this extra available buying power and do stupid crap with it? Or are you gonna treat it like not your money and be super safe with it and just use that available buying power to make you know maybe an extra few percent or are you gonna be really aggressive with it? If you get very aggressive with it, it could be very dangerous. You could get into your, yourself into a position where you get margin called. Um, you could you can um, obviously when things are leveraged, you can lose a lot more faster and you can make a lot more quicker. So kind of up to you, well, 100% up to you on that. Um, but a lot of that has to do with risk tolerance and, and your trading style and everything else. So as far as what Robin Hood shows, uh, John had asked me like why he has margin turned on and why, why um, is it only showing options collateral and not margin used? So the reason that is, so when you open up a put credit spread, you're only setting aside the money to cover that put credit spread should things go against you. And when I mean things go against you, that's generally generally on expiration. So we'll take a look at one real quick. Here's a SPY, put credit spread. I received credit, but I put $100 on the line for each one of these. So my short leg, the one I sold, the 406, means somebody has the right to buy them. And my 405 gives me the right to buy them at 405. So if this expired and it went against me, basically I would be responsible for buying them at $406 and then selling them for 405, meaning I'm taking a hundred dollars loss um, because it's a $1 difference times a hundred. Every contract is worth a hundred. And once that happens, that hundred dollars is gonna be deducted from my account. Um, because that was the cost of the trade. So at that point, if you used all your margin, let's say you had $10,000 and you had $10,000 worth of collateral, then you would need to use that $10,000 to cover all those positions and make those trades. And at that time it would, it would convert from the options collateral to margin used. So before that happens, it's just a placeholder essentially, just saying, hey, we're holding this aside just in case. But the good thing is you're not being charged any interest on it. So if you were to make take that margin and make plays like just like super ridiculously far out of the money, like on AT&T, it's basically, you know, free money um, or free, free collateral that you can use to make some money on. You know, uh, but the thing is, anything can go against you. You know, you never know when even the most stable of stocks have these huge, huge moves. Um, nobody expected like what happened with Altria to happen, like such a crazy move. Um, or like, for example, Netflix, when they had their, their huge move after hours yesterday um, due to earnings. So things can move against you a lot more quickly than you could expect. Um, but that's why, that's why that happens. Um, 
and you'll only show that as options collateral until something is moved. Now, the only, the only other time where you show margin use, so instead of, instead of using it for collateral, you can use that margin to purchase stock. So, um, but you do, so you can use partial, let's see, actually, let's see, will it show it on SPY? Probably will. Um, down at the bottom, yep, there you go. So this is, the SPY is pretty stable. So you'll see margin requirements, and there's a 50% initial requirement, which means you can have 50%, um, 50 that you have in cash, and 50% they'll cover you with margin. And then that maintenance requirement means that's the amount of capital you're required to have to maintain this position. Now, if your account value happened to go way down, let's say you were used all your margin and everything else and it went down uh, really far, then you could get yourself into a position where they have what's called a margin call. So if you don't have enough capital to cover that 25%, which gives you room to move, right? Initially when you bought it, it was only 50%. The stock can move a bit, but let's say your account value goes down to where it is not covering even 25% of it, and so maybe 20% or something like that, then Robinhood at that point is going to say, hey, you owe us you know, X amount of hundreds of dollars, tens of dollars, thousands of dollars, or whatever is relative to the, um, the stock's move. So that's the only time um, those two instances, you either use your margin to buy stock or use your margin um, to, to cover a um, credit spread or any other spread that requires collateral. And then that moves against you and you're forced to use the collateral. And then in which case it'll convert from that options collateral to margin used. All right, so I hope all that makes sense. Oh, and also if you look at the difference between SPY and, um, Let's look at a stock like BNGO, very high volatility. Um, you'll notice this has 100% initial requirement, 100% maintenance requirement because the volatility is high. Um, their Robinhood is not gonna let you use your margin. Uh, you have to have cash to be able to hold onto this stock. And if it goes down, you used your margin, you'll, you will be margin called on any of these guys. Well, actually you're not able to use the margin in the first place. So um, I hope all that makes sense, but you can look at various stocks and it's always going, their margin requirements and maintenance requirements are always gonna be relative to the volatility. I think like Tesla is a 56 initial requirement, 45, um, maintenance, um, any of the low float stocks, they're, they're always going to be a hundred percent or something that's initial options are always going to be a hundred percent. So you can't, yeah, they're not going to float you on those. So like you can see my buying power is 21, 21 74. If, if I use that to purchase AT and T then I can purchase $2,000 worth. If I used it to purchase BNGO, since it's 100%, I would only probably be able to use like $1,000 of it. So it's it's pretty crazy. But use it, use it wisely, use it safely if you're going to use margin at all. All right. Um, we can take a quick peek at what plays we have going on. Um, this Apple, which Apple is not making a run for the top side. So that was a quick tutorial over a couple days of how to turn $200 into $0. I won that challenge, unfortunately. Um, spies, we have those. Those are looking good. I'll just probably let those expire worthless or close them on Friday for a dollar or two. Um, we have our put credit spreads. Um, those should be... Those should be all good. I still do expect some more bump up before the end of the week and especially coming into Monday. That's my expectations. I can totally be wrong. Um, and then we had our few, few YOLOs that are, that have gone pretty good against us. So all in all, what do we have? Um, four, that's a thousand, $1,200 that I lost on 
pretty much YOLO plays, but that Tesla A10 call, um, I did, I did play with the, uh, um, legging into a debit spread and then back out, which I think gave me a five, five hundred dollars or so, um, win on that. So down $500 on the YOLO plays and, and I still think that A10 is actually into play. I just ne never know what's going to happen towards the end of the week here. I, I still foresee an unexpected rip up, um, coming into earnings. Um, whether that happens this week or Monday, no idea. So we'll see. And I do have a few ideas on how I'm going to play earnings and I'll, I'll probably do that one, do that one live. I think I have a pretty good idea on that. So, um, let's see, we have, uh, yeah. And then I guess that's moving into next week after that, after these put credit spreads. So, all right, guys, hope margin makes sense. Um, I don't know how many guys are using it, but use it safely if you are. All right. Love you guys. Let's make a lot of money.